Good day everyone. So welcome back to part tour of our bike uh, storage tour. So it's been a few weeks after the, um, the other video that we filmed um, early on and we've got the new bikes and I just got them fitted a few days ago and we've been out for a ride uh, two times since we got the new bikes and everything's working really, really well. So true to my word of giving you a little tour of how we have it set up with the new bikes and with uh, mountain bikes with through axles on the front forks. Uh, I'll do a little short tour and show you how we have it set up now and hopefully this might help some other people out there who have a van and they're thinking about putting uh, their mountain bikes in the van to sort of set it up and have it with them all the time. So let's have a look. Um, first of all, I'll pull the tray out like I did in the other video, show you how it works and then I'll pull the camera off again and I'll show you how I've got it all mounted up. So pretty straightforward. Just pull them out and there we go. So, try not to trip over my mic. Um, so this is how we've got the bike set up at the moment. And it's actually, it's not 100% complete yet. It's about, it's almost there, it's 90% at the moment. So there's a few things that we'll probably have to change in the near future, but where um, it works for now, it's set up pretty well for now. And um, we're pretty happy with it. And I'll go over the things that we're gonna change and, and why we're gonna do that. So probably one of the the main two main differences is first of all we've got the bikes going um, instead of top and tail opposite of each other they've we've got them both facing forwards but we've just got them staggered back um, the reason we did that is basically if it's because of the handlebar width so with that wider handlebars on the mountain bikes in there where the skateboards are um, if it if we do top and tail and did try it out top and tail um, if you run in top and tail, basically the handlebars and the second bike, they sort of hit the skateboards. So we could take the skateboards out and it would fit and it'd be okay. Um, but we don't want to do that. We like having the skateboards and we like having them um, under, under the bed hanging there. That works for us. So we decided to run it this way. And I looked around on eBay and on bike stores and the fork mounts were really expensive. They're about... 40 to 50 dollars per bike mount to buy it prefabricated in a store or online and i thought that was really expensive and the through axle on the new mountain bikes is literally just a tube with a thread on the end and a and a tool you know like a hex key tool or a little quick release on the other side so i had a look around at a hardware store and i managed to get a chock of wood for free i uh, bought a couple little galvanized metal um, saddle clamps and i got some um, internal diameter 15 millimeter internal, di internal diameter um, poly pipe tube. So that all cost me about maybe $2.80, maybe $3 all up for the two. And um, it, it works perfectly. The bikes are secure, they don't move around and they fit in just enough. Like uh, the handlebars on, on the bike here in the front that just clears the, um, the sort of door opening on the frame there in the van. And here, the other bike just, just clears the skateboard, so they fit perfectly. Um, the only thing that we've sort of had an issue is because with the mountain bikes, they do have the straight wide bars rather than a curly drop bar on the road bike that wasn't here. Um, so originally I put the tray down there, I actually set the tray back so the handlebars and everything on the handlebars would uh, clear when the doors close, but now there's a there's a gap, probably about that much of a gap between the door and the handlebars. And the bike here, this rear tire, because it's a larger, chunkier tire, it does actually, unless we have it sort of over here in an angle, it does actually hit our plastic storage tubs in the back there. So it does work the way it is for now. But if we decide that we're gonna keep the bikes in here permanently, um, a thing that I will one day do is um, disconnect the bolts on the tray that attach the actual um, plywood part base of the tray disconnect that and actually move the whole tray forwards because um, it can come about two inches forwards so uh, and by doing that that will then leave the clearance in the back for the plastic tubs and then these bikes can go in perfectly parallel to each other so that's really the only um, issue that we've had so far and the workaround is just having the bike on to a bit of an angle and it clears and it's fine. So that works for us. 
Um, I guess the other issue is because we don't have pannier bags, we don't have anywhere to store our bike related gear, you know, bike locks and spare lights and that sort of thing. So I've got all that stuff tucked into a spare pannier bag at the moment. And probably a thing that we'll do in the future is we'll get a plastic storage tub and we'll use some double sided adhesive Velcro, stick it into this space here um, in between the bikes. And then we can put our locks, our lights, all those things in there, ready to go when we want to go for a ride. The next part um, is more about the mounting system. So I posted uh, photos of the way I've got it set up on a couple of mountain biking um, groups and a lot of people are really interested in how it's actually attached to the platform and they were skeptical that it was going to be durable enough and that it'd move around. So I'll, I'll pull the camera off and I'll actually take it over and I'll show you because I've got a system here where I've got the screws in the top for the saddle but I've also got some underneath as well. And so far um, we've only had it in here for a few days but we've driven on some bumpy roads and you know it's it's pretty secure so I, I don't see it being an issue so I'll pull the camera off and I'll give you a look all right so basically the same as the previous video I'll just do a quick point of view sort of perspective and I'll show you exactly how I've got it set up so here you can see the wooden blocks that I uh, got for free from the hardware store from the offcut bin which is very nice of them to give that to me I've got the black plastic poly pipe which has an internal diameter of 15 millimeters which suits this type of through axle so these through axles are 110 mil uh, wide and then they're a 15 millimeter diameter so all I had to do is just measure up the width in between here including the little recess on the fork I chopped those down with a hacksaw and then I got the these saddle clamps which I got from the hardware store for I don't know about 20 cents each I think they were and yeah, just fasten them down. So use a button head uh, screw fastener, just adjust the contrast quickly, not the contrast, the focus. So just a button head um, zinc galvanized little fastener. So four of those on each, two per saddle. And that is very secure. It doesn't need to be out to the side and I'll show you why in a second, but right as it is, um, there's like a little bit of natural flex in the frame and in the wood but it's, it's secure as it needs to be. So on the underside, there's four, oh, where am I? Here we go. So there's four of these button head fasteners as well. And uh, they are about um, maybe sort of like 50 millimeters, so about two inches. So they run through the marine plywood. They run up through the marine plywood and up into the pine. And that's why um, I've got these clamps on the inside here, they're offset because I've actually got the other fasteners coming up underneath through the plywood attaching the, um, the pine block to the tray. So if, obviously if I had them both at the same place they would actually hit each other. So by doing this it's still really sturdy but I prevent it from, um, from hitting each other and fouling each other. So just like that. So yeah about, about three dollars we'll say, probably rounding up. Um, which is a hell of a lot cheaper than sort of 80 to hundred dollars buying them prefabricated. And then all I have to use is a six millimeter um, tool and I just unscrew that, take it out, lift the bike out, attach the front wheel and off you go. Really cool thing that we have sort of enjoyed having is these bikes do actually have the adjustable height um, dropper posts. So um, when we put it in the storage, we slam the seat all the way down so that way when we put it in it clears, doesn't hit the frame, it sort of has plenty of clearance and then when we go riding the seat comes up to its full height and that saves having to, which with our previous bike, we would have to sort of undo the little clamp at the bottom and adjust it and bring the seat height up to a certain point each time which wasn't a big deal because we'd marked the, um, the seat height so it was just a matter of getting the three-way tool that I've got tucked into our little bits and pieces area here, all our tools and spares and skateboarding gear and all our bike gear. So I've got that and then we just adjust it. But yeah, having the adjustable height dropper post does help um, just because when we finish the ride, we just press the lever, drop the post down, take the front wheel off, drop it on and then slide it back into, into the um, storage area here. Another thing aside from having to adjust the tray and not having to have the bike on such an angle over to clear the plastic tubs 
Um, another thing that I do want to sort of look into a bit more of an elegant solution is what to do with our helmets because we've got new uh, mountain biking helmets and they are a lot more bulky than our sort of road commuting helmets. Um, we've just, you know, got them hanging here in the front. Uh, usually it's not an issue because I've taken to hanging a towel off the bed frame here just to cover the bikes up when I'm at the beach or something just to not sort of show everyone that drives past what we have inside. But yeah, you know, the helmets, if I don't have the towel up, the helmets do cop a little bit of the sun underneath the curtains. And being that they're good quality helmets, I don't want to have them in the sun all the time. So I'm looking for ways, maybe a bit more of an elegant way of storing our helmets. I have considered something in terms of hanging them off the door or attaching them to the door. Um, we've got our, our curtains and our windows here, maybe up the top and that little wooden panel. I'm not really sure yet, but I might do something else with them. I mean, it's fine having it like this at the moment, it's okay. But yeah, ultimately I'd like to have them off the bike and somewhere else out of the way and, and out of the sun and out of the weather. So that's the only other thing. All right, well, I'll put this back in quickly. Ah, drop a post. A little bit easier than having to take the tool out. And there it is. So yeah, it works, works pretty well so far. Um, same deal as always, any questions, any comments, anything that I've missed out, made unclear, uh, leave a comment below or jump on our social media. We're available under Instagram and uh, Facebook under our same name, Com Comfortably Lost. So jump on there or onto our website, which is comfortablylost.com. Um, any questions, comments, any ideas, um, if you want a photo or anything else of the setup or know exactly what I used, um, yeah, feel free, drop us a line, we'll help you out if we can. Um, until next time, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the future. Okay, bye.